Egyptian temples of Karnak lie three kilometers north of Luxor. The awe-inspiring Avenue of the Sphinxes leads to the entrance of this magnificent location. It was here during more than 2,000 years that the kings of numerous epochs had their final resting places built. The sphinxes that stand guard at the temple have the body of a lion and the head of a ram. With these religious structures, the ancient Egyptian sovereigns sought the goodwill of the divine father Amun-Re, to whom the buildings were dedicated. Only high priests and pharaohs were allowed into the religious chambers. Strict rituals played a vital part in the mysterious ceremonies that were held in the Egyptian temples. Artistically carved hieroglyphs and paintings can be found on all the buildings in Karnak. They relate to various gods and also to the royal builders of the respective temples. Pineg Jem, the high priest of Amun in Thebes and pharaoh of the 21st dynasty, has been immortalized by a 15 meter high colossus. The history of the actual building of the mighty Karnak temple is a little confusing. In the middle of the 16th century BC, the area was extended toward the west. Although the oldest structures that date back to the Middle Empire have perished forever, they were once the center of this holy place. The impressive courtyard of Ramesses III's temple is flanked on three sides with imposing Osiris pillars that are adorned with hieroglyphs that depict the pharaoh in his finest jubilee clothes. The greatest temple of this area was dedicated to the god Amun-Re, the master of wind and air. The kings of the new empire made him into a national deity. A hundred and thirty-four columns, each with a circumference of ten meters, once supported the roof of the great column hall of Karnak that has long since disappeared. Like a wonder of the world, the 104 by 52 meter Great Hall contains each of the breathtaking 24 meter high columns.
Even today, hieroglyphs cover a large part of these gigantic columns that originally stood in the darkness of the main temple and were covered by a massive ceiling. The columns and walls that lie beyond them are decorated with pictures of various pharaohs. The illustrated writing describes how the kings made sacrifices to the gods and also praises the courage of numerous pharaohs who fought in legendary battles. In addition to the beauty of its inner buildings, Karnak's great temple towers, the Pylones, and also the obelisks, are a stunning sight. There was a good deal of competition between the dynasties in this great temple area. The pharaohs often replaced the names of their predecessors with their own and also transformed existing buildings to suit themselves. In spite of much rebuilding and wanton destruction, the pride of the great statues of the pharaohs has survived the centuries. In the centre of this archaeological area, the unique atmosphere of these buildings is very impressive. As the ruins shine out in the rich glow of sunlight, the powerful significance of the original temple is plain to see. Because of its wonderful appearance, in the ancient world, the banqueting hall of Tutmosis III was called Achmenu, the Shrine of the Monuments. Part of the decorated ceiling of this banqueting hall has survived to the present day. The gigantic scarab on its exterior dates back to Amenophis III. Two great obelisks tower above the temple area. In former times, priests held holy rituals at the nearby Holy River. With its impressive height of 29.5 metres, the obelisk of Queen Hatshepsut is the greatest of its kind in the whole of Egypt. Thanks to its beautiful buildings and art treasures, the temple area of Karnak is a much prized and unique jewel of ancient Egyptian history and culture.